Hey everybody, this is Tracy from Tracy's Art and Craft and I'm here today with a really great idea. It really ties in what we were doing yesterday. Now this idea isn't my own, this idea comes from Tina from Shabby Dabby Doo Da and I'll have her um, video linked in the description box below so that you can go over there. This is one of her really old videos um, but I haven't seen her do it more recently so I thought I'd do it to refresh people to remind you um, I have pulled in so I'm going to tell you the sorts of things you'll need it is really easy beginner level stuff but there are certain things that you'll need so you'll need some sort of small envelopes so you don't have to um, use ready bought envelopes um, the great thing about this is if you've got ones from birthday cards that are torn here she even says in her video that that is the perfect time to be using them because you're going to cover up all the back of this. So you could use, I'd always recommend going for small ones. They seem to be easier to work with. I did try to do a bigger one and I've got to be honest, she is right. Smaller ones are definitely easier to work with. Um, the other type I've got are these like wage slip type ones. The only thing I'd recommend is putting in a really big thumb hole into here. I would probably use my two inch one. And just get a really big thumb hole in so that when you do this you'll see I'll, sh I'll do one of these I'll show you you'll see that it just looks better if there's a really big thumb hole in there or of course you could make up your own you could use your 8x8 paper 6x6 papers make up your own little um, envelope um, if you should I do one for you to show you how to make a really easy one yeah, let's grab let's grab one real quick and I'll show you how to make your own envelope because I'm thinking if somebody wants to do this. So I'm just going to use this. I think this is six by six. Not sure. It's a small one. So I'm just going to grab any piece just so I can quickly show you. This is thin paper. Thin paper will work the best for making envelopes. Now all you want to do is find your centre. So bring it corner to corner making sure the corners are straight I hope you can see that with the background I'm afraid I have to use this to make sure I keep my mat clean and just give it a pinch like that in the center and then do it with the other corners just like so and then give it a pinch again and then you're going to have yourself a little cross of a center mark you want to bring this just slightly above the center mark and squish it down again if you use a thin paper it makes it really easy you want to bring both of these into the center mark so that one wanted to be just above just above the center these two side ones want to be directly on the center mark really really simple especially once you get the hang of it see this one goes above the center the center marks there and this one goes above just by a little fraction I'd say half a centimeter they will all stick together and then you want to bring this down so you can see you've got the envelope here you want to bring this down a little bit if you can see what I'm saying so that goes over that corner so you get this sort of straight line oh I've done that wonky try not to be as wonky as me just like that so you've got this little bit and what you do is you open all these and all these little corners that you've got here you just snip them out so of course if you want to round anything you can go ahead and round it but this just gives you a really simple small envelope I've, I've got an envelope um, board you know one of those memory keeper envelope boards still got to admit still prefer this method I know you get these little creases and things but they don't bother me at all once you've sort of put it all together there we go you've got yourself an envelope and of course it doesn't matter if you're not completely straight here or completely neat because we're going to be covering all of this today so you need some small envelopes moving on the next thing you need is some 
blossoms or flowers okay so where I was doing yesterday was all that fussy cutting and cutting out I have cut out various flowers let me just show you I've cut out some single flowers like these I have also somewhere in here let me just grab a few let's grab a few aha I've cut out photographs of groups of flowers like this um, this one's been fussy ripped it's not going to work so well I would highly recommend fussy cutting like this and like this the great thing about flowers is this was a square photo of some flowers and I've just cut in where I thought it would look nice great thing about flowers is they're very forgiving um, no one knows what the flower looked like before you started cutting at it so <laughs> you can usually get away with um, you know quite a few mistakes you see so I've just cut out a few this is how they started and I just kind of cut round some of the flowers like this and got something like that and you can see how much of it I actually cut away so yeah you need yourself some blossoms you can also cut out ones that have been drawn not just photographed ones all different shapes all different sizes single ones whole ones anything like that you need yourself some flowers they can come from anywhere books magazines I've got a whole mixture here from books and magazines as you saw me cutting out yesterday I was cutting out all sorts so they can literally come from anywhere um, they could come from your own photographs you could go out and take photographs especially if you do do a lot of printing at home you can go out, take some photographs of some flowers on your on your last walk that you've gone on. Come home, print those off onto copy paper, and they're going to be perfect for this. You know, you don't need them to be thick, you don't need them to be sturdy. This is going to be beautiful. And then I've added in myself some extra bits and pieces that I would want, and I'm going to let you know what those are, so that if you did want to add extra bits and pieces, you could. You do not have to. Trust me, it looks beautiful on its own. So you could just have envelopes and these and some glue and you're done or you can add extra bits so i have here some small bows these bows come from various places some of them i've handmade myself like this one some of them i've brought from things like the works places like the works like these ones okay these ones have also been brought um they're a bit of a weird shape so i've never used them before but you know they will work so I've got myself some bows in case I want them. I've also brought myself in my trusty jars of butterflies. Okay, in case I wanted to pop a few butterflies on, because you know me, I love my butterflies. And I've also got Tina's from Chevy W D Dar her um, paper bows. And I absolutely love her paper bows. I'm absolutely addicted to them. Um, yeah. These are just beautiful. You get all, di all these different designs. I've got both her neutrals and her brights. I've, this one's been printed on vellum. This one on card. This one on a gloss copy weight paper. Um, yep, that's a gloss copy weight paper. So I say, can you see how well they print no matter what you're printing them on? So yeah, we've got loads and loads of these. So I brought those along. Let's stop gas bagging. Oh, I can't stop talking today, seriously. I think it's because I weren't talking very well yesterday and now today it's all spewing out of me. Like verbal diarrhea, you know, you know. So, <laughs> I have Distress Ink with me. I've got the vintage photo today and all I'm going to be doing is um, distressing up the envelopes because they're so very white. So I'm literally just going to take ink like this. You can see it's already beginning. I haven't even put any ink on that's because my dobber is still full from last time and yeah I'm literally just doing this to the front of the envelope and that is it there done that's all I'm using that for I've brought in some pieces of doily now I saw Tina on her video use doily you'll see her use doily I wanted to use it very slightly different so I'm going to show you when I come to use it how I'm going to use it and how I'm going to adapt it and change it. But you can use it the same way Tina does. I mean, definitely go see her video and you'll see. And the other thing I brought along is a little bit of bling. I've got some silver, I've got some gold, and I've got some white. And I like to put these, but you know, down the middle of the butterflies. You see Tina does that on her videos. 
I also thought I might put some along the lace if I put some lace on. And that brings me to my last item that I've got with me. I'm going to show you what I have with me when I'm doing projects. So what I do is I usually do two. Sorry, I'm struggling with my drawer that won't close. I usually do two journals at a time that I'm working on progressively actively. I do have others that I'm, I just sort of faff around and do whenever I feel like. And I have this round tub and I fill it up with fabrics that will work in both. So I've got some cheesecloth, I've got some trims, I've got a ring here, a book ring. I'm not 100% sure why I thought I needed that in there, but you know, it's in there. Um, I probably had an idea and I've forgotten it. You know, I've got all different bits and pieces in here. And all this stuff, I've got some, this might actually come in lovely. I'm going to pull this out. This is definitely going to work. We're definitely going to use a piece of this. Um, yeah, I've got all these trims and stuff like that. I've got bits of burlap, I've got lace. So these are my bits of trims, my bits that I like to add on to edges of pages or underneath little pictures and things. So I have that beside me. It's always beside me. So let's get started. We're going to make blooming envelopes. I love this idea. I really do. Um, I'm not sure if Tina called it blooming envelopes or if I just called it that. That's going to be the title now anyway. Um, so the first thing we want to do is get some bits. Now I noticed Tina had trouble when she was laying hers down. Now I do want to say Tina was doing this way, way, way back, like quite a few years ago. She has developed and changed her style away, doing things and things like that. So now she'll probably do it this way, to be honest. This isn't like an original idea, but what I'm gonna do is, as I come across things that I think stick well or go well, I'm gonna, and I decide I want to keep it there, I'm gonna put a tiny dot of glue, like this, down in the bottom there, and stick it in place. And the reason I'm doing that is, at the end, I will glue them all down properly, but I want to leave room to tuck things behind, or be able to go over the top, and things like that. Okay, so at the end, we'll stick down anything that looks like it needs doing. I like to use, multi-colours. Tina says in her video that she struggles when it comes to multi-colours. Some people do and that's just your style. So if your style is that you want to use them all one colour, like all reds, all pinks and you know they look really good too. So go for that. But I want to use multi-colours. The other thing is my envelope's quite a bit bigger than Tina's. I'm not going to bring my flowers quite the full way up. I'm going to cut some of this down because otherwise we'll be here all day with some of these. So let me just try to put a few together without, you know, taking absolutely forever. I like where that is. I'm just going to pop a little bit of glue here as well because I like where that is. There we go. Remember once you put your glue down, um, if you've only put a dot down, you could probably pry that up anyway if you did want to move it. It's not the end of the world. I really like this one. I want this to come out here. So what I'm going to do is this one, because I like where it's coming out here. I'm just going to pop a little glue there, as well as some behind. There we go. Obviously, I'll glue these all down properly in a little while. As we can see here, I can then put things behind them. Yeah, I like that. Maybe up a little bit. Now, I have only got small pictures of flowers. If you've got bigger ones, this will be a lot easier. This will happen a lot quicker. But I'm cutting out of little books that I've got, and they're not very big pictures at all. There we go. Oh, I do love this idea. I was really excited when I saw this video and I was like, oh, I really want to make this. But at the same time, 
you know yesterday I was just I was just feeling I'm still quite poorly to be honest but I'm stacked up on do you know what I've just remembered we don't want them overlapping okay here I've made a mistake a good learning curve for you guys as well I don't want them overlapping because we want to be able to use this as a workable pocket so like I say you do have a little you know you only put a little bit of glue on it's not the end of the world this one I'm actually going to tear down a little bit and what I'm going to do is put them back inside the envelope because if they are hanging over we can't use that as a pocket can we so that's just me having a moment so I'm going to stick this one down properly because it doesn't want to stay down now there we go and I'm going to start by sticking down a few of these because they're just doing really well where they are I'm not going to be putting anything underneath them now let's just stick those down that one may still have stuff put behind it so I won't stick that down right here we go we're getting somewhere now oh I love that one yep so sorry about that you know we all make we all make mistakes don't we We'll forget what we're doing so what I do is I do put glue over all of it I flip it around and wipe it I noticed Tina was doing the same thing this side you're not going to see so don't worry too much I might actually keep that for down here that one I'm just going to stick down this one because this one is in its place now there we go Oh, it's looking really pretty. Right, what else have we got here? We've got some yellows. Should we have some yellows poking through? Yes, I like that. Let's have a few yellows poking through there. There we go. What else do we have? Oh, more daisies. Oh, more pinks. Need to go behind. Yeah, I like it to go there. I leave it up for a second because. I'm probably going to, want to put something behind there. So let's leave these up just for a second while I find another few flowers. Just a dot of glue again, just a little bit, just to hold it in place so it doesn't get moved. I think I'm going to have this one right at the top there. Like so. And let's pop in some daisy, shall we, as well. Try to position them so we don't have too much white showing. looks good so I'm just going to get the glue put onto this and then we can stick it all down and we are pretty much done Let's see if I can get that position again where it didn't have too much white there I think it was there we go so now we have our blooming little pocket we have the pocket bit here now the added little things I wanted to do especially with the doily 
is I know it's Tina to put little bits of doily down here and things like that. But what I really, really wanted to do is to take some random bits of doily and just stick them to the back like this. So we had some sort of coming around behind the flowers there. I thought that would be really, really pretty. So let's do that. I'm gonna take, oh God, I've got bits of flowers stuck everywhere. So I'm just gonna take a bit of glue, putting it on all this sort of stuff. If any of this feels a little bit flimsy, don't worry because that will be stuck down when you come to, um, you know, when you put it into your journal. I'll show you in a little while. I'll put it into my journal and I'll show you what it looks like. And I think I'll have an, another piece. Just going along here. So for any pieces that aren't stuck down, just lift them up, pop a little glue under there. Um, but don't take a lot, it is only doily, so. And all this is gonna be covered anyway, it's gonna be hidden. I just want to tear down my doilies now at the sides and get them looking how I like. There we go. I really like that. So I wanted to decorate the bottom as well because I really liked how Tina's looked when she did hers. So I thought, why not? Let's give it a go. I'm going to bring in a little bit of lace though for mine. Sorry, I've still got the um, sellotape because this is quite a new lace. I haven't yet. I haven't yet changed it. Of course, if you wanted an older colour on your lace, you wanted to ink it up and things like that, you can. I'm not going to because I like the look of this one, where it is. Just get my 3 and one 3 and one's really good for sticking down things like lace. You can use your tacky glue. Oh. No, not you. Come on! Just one second, I'll be right back. Sorry about that, I just had to clean up my three in one. It turns out the last time I used it, I made a rotten mess. And then, didn't clean up behind myself, just stuck the lid on. Because, yeah, I'm like that. Oh, talking about that, I've got to say thank you to a lovely lady called Kay. And Kay gave some lovely advice about my, this stuff, I still haven't done the, I haven't used the advice yet, as you can see, um, where we can't open the lids to these blooming, oh, this one opened. Well, now I look like I'm lying. I can't even open the lids to these usually, and I have to call my husband in, and when he's not here, I've got no hope. I have to wait until he gets back, you know, like, I can't open those things. And I don't know why I've never thought about it. I've been doing this for years and years and years had these bottles for years and years and years never thought about it she said to put some um cling film over the where you put the lid you know over the opening and then put the lid on top and then you can open it every time why hadn't i thought of this of course it makes complete sense but there's always something you, we don't think of isn't there there's always something so i'm going to add a little bit of bling just to the edge of this so I tend to use it in stacks of five. So I always cut this to sort of um, the size I usually use it. And then if I want it different, I can cut it after, but it just means I can reuse all these little pieces here. And then what I do is I get, um, you can use tacky glue, three in one, anything like that. And I pop it down quite thick because these little sticky things, they never stay stuck. They just pop off really easily. You all know, you've all worked with them. Yeah, and they, oh, I hate not having nails. I've really got to stop chewing. I've got to put on my fake nails so I can grow them. I can do even less with fake nails, you know, but it does mean I'm growing them, not chewing them. 
to oblivion. And I've tried everything throughout my life. I've tried all the, you know, the, the, because I hate mustard, putting mustard on there. I've, I've tried the nail biting solvents. I've tried everything. I will chew through all of that and more. Um, but fake nails worked every time. I put some false nails on. I don't chew them, you see, because they don't feel nice in my mouth. They're horrible. <laughs> and then after a while, I break the habit. Right. Let's get some butterflies or bows. Which ones do I want? Maybe a bit of both. Why not? Why not? I'm going to go for really pretty colours. Um, maybe some greens as well. But to, for this one, I want to go for a really pretty... Oh, look. Yes, that. That right there. That right there is exactly what I want. Don't you love it when you put something down and it's just right and you're not... You're not humming and hawing about it, it's just down and you're like, yes, that's it. Done. I love when that happens. I'm just making sure I've got no glue in there to sort of attach itself to anything. Oh, so pretty. I love that. And I think I will put these flowers that I had just here. Again, I'm not inking around none of this. I want this to be bright in the journal that I'm thinking of putting it in. Now, when I come to put it in a page, it might be too wide. I am using quite a large envelope for this. But that's okay because you can, you, like I say, nobody knows what the shape of these flowers were. You can just go in and cut a few little blossoms off here and there and get it to fit. As long as the envelope fits, you can make everything else fit. Yeah, when I saw this, I was just so, uh, you can hear the excitement in my voice. I was like, oh, they're so pretty. I've got to make some of those. Now, I don't like that straight line that's there. That's because that's where the picture cut off and I don't have any more blossom to use. So I'm just going to pop a butterfly over that. And I don't really want to go for a pink one again, but I do love the idea of a green one. What do we think? I don't know now. That one. I like that one. There we go. So I'm just going to burnish this. Um, you've probably seen me do this loads of times before. No, I say I'm going to burnish it. You know what I've lost. I've lost my phone. I made myself so organised. I'm so angry with myself. <laughs> Bear with me. I made myself so organised for this video and I was so proud of myself. I was like, oh, I'm so... Found it. I was like, oh, I'm so organised today. I've done so well. Yeah, of course. It wouldn't be one of my videos if I wasn't here being completely disorganised and being such... I always say it's ditzy. D-I-T-Z-Y, ditzy. I'm very ditzy as a person. Very disorganised, very... Uh, I annoy myself more than anybody ever annoys me, you know. I can never just do things easily and simply. Nope. Not me. So I'm just bending it up now so that this part here, the middle part of the butterfly, the body part, is flat. And I'm just using my fingers to make sure that it's bent, each wing's bent up but the body's down. And then on the whole length of the body is where I put the glue. Um, if you want it to be more secure, there are better glues to use than a tacky glue. Um, I wouldn't even say three in one. I'd, I'd say probably like the art glitter glue would probably be the best one to make it really secure. But I have had no problems with them falling off or anything like that. I'm going to bring in another bit of this um, this little bling to tie it together again. So all I want to do after that is just go on to show you these smaller brown envelopes that I have here. These little wage slip envelopes, we call them here in the UK. Um, I don't know what their names are elsewhere. But this is like a really old, well I say really old, 
I remember them. I, I, I don't remember them from my wages, but I do remember my parents bringing them home. This is what your wage slips used to come in. And, you, you know, if you're paid by cash, which you used to be paid by sometimes in some jobs back when I was little. Um, I'm sorry I'm faffing with this. I do actually have a little pokey tool, which will work a treat if I knew where I put that blooming thing too. Here it is. It's right in front of me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I try to be more organised for you guys. I try to be better. And what happens? I just... <laughs> you can't stop being yourself. That's the problem, isn't it? You can't run away from who you are. So, yeah, we used to get our wages in um, cash. And then when you got them in cash, you've got your wage, your cash and your wage slip in one of these little wages envelopes. We go. Of course, all the glue will dry clear. Not to worry about that. If you wanted to add on any, um, I need a bit of extra glue just here. If you wanted to add on any glitter, you know, a little bit of um, glitter glue, things like that, you could. Maybe we'll add a word. Why not? Why not? I say that's because I don't know where my words are. I know. I'll tell you what it is, what's making me so disorganised, is that I've moved around. Now, I moved around a while ago and I didn't quite like it. There were some changes to what had been made. So I've moved around recently again. And, of course, that has just set me off again with my, I don't know where anything is. But I am one of those people I do keep moving around, moving around. What little words do we have in here? Memories, oh I do like memories, I use that word a lot Because that's what we use our journals for isn't it I'm just going to ink the um, the edges of this a little bit Where I've cut off, because it did have a darker border And I've cut that off and there's bits where it's showing and bits where it's not There we go and we'll just stick that down again tacky glue can go onto fabrics and things like that if it's a thick fabric you're gonna need more glue it does work and they it takes longer to dry than three and one oh i love it it's so cute so if that was to go into a journal i have my journal that i'm making at the moment here with me so this is my latest journal she is named her name is Sandra I've already named her I love her she's beautiful so if she was going into a page let's choose a page let's go for this plain one she would look like this now here is where I say it might be a bit too wide or a bit too tall for you if you don't like it poking out like I do like them poking out I would probably have it a bit down a bit there so that my little lace is poking out too I would either glue this down and score it so it folds with the page which is probably what I'm going to do to be honest and if there are any bits out that I didn't like I could tear those off and just make it look nice however I do like it I'd probably score just down here getting that fold just perfect getting it glued right into the crease so that when it came up you would have you know it would be stuck to the other page that's so sort of like overflowing onto the other page and like I say, you can adjust these to the size of your journal. If I did it in this one, for instance, look how much smaller that would be. And this is the one that I made. So the one that you made would probably be better than these ones. Except I do want some big ones in there. I do want them to be a bit other sizes. So I just want to show you how you could use one of these ones. Because this one obviously is going to be very similar, isn't it? Because you've got the same similar shape. But this one, for instance, isn't. Now, you could, if you didn't have these type of envelopes, you know those really long ones? This is like one of them long ones, but cut down. And tomorrow I'll be showing you, I'll be tagging you to a video where the lady that I'll be using, you know, the video, that's my inspiration. She does that. You'll see how to do that on her video. So do go check her out tomorrow. Um, she takes one of the longer ones and she cuts it down. And turns it into one of these type of envelopes so you will be needing this type of thing tomorrow but like i say do check out her video she shows you how to do all of that 
Um, but what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take this and make a really large thumb hole, larger than I normally would. Now this doesn't always work well on thin paper. It's done all right today, actually. Okay, it's a bit teary, but it's all right. That's, that punch looks thicker paper. So we have ourselves a really large thumb hole here. You can ink any of this. You can do whatever. Say you don't like these bits, you could um, cut your own thumb hole to go literally from corner to corner. I'm not too fast. I'm sure I'll do something with them at some point. So I'm just going to get my blossoms again. I'm just going to check the time of this video. No, we're good. We've got time. So yeah, I'm just going to get my blossoms again. I really prefer these photograph ones, the way that they just fill up the page so quickly just works for me. So definitely look out for the photograph ones. And here I'm going to show you, you don't need that full point, but you can still create that full point. So if you have got a torn envelope as well, you know, this is going to work. Um, for covering up all that tear. Here we go, so here's where we're building it up now. Let's just see if I can find some more of these blossoms because these are my favourite and then you can just add in. I like where they are at the moment so I'm just going to glue them down so they don't move and disappear on me. Obviously making sure I've got room for, um, you know, popping things underneath. go we can glue these all down properly at the end like I said before just repeating myself I'm sorry I have a tendency to do that again I really like that so I'm just gonna get a bit of glue on there that looks really pretty do we have oh these are nice aren't they so can you see I'm not actually going to be gluing this to any of the envelope so here is where I'm going to make sure I'm gluing it to the flowers so I'm going to put a bit of glue there glue onto the flowers and then I'm going to glue these flowers onto this one too and that will just hold it really securely in place like so there we go and let's see what other little blooms I can find I've got this one Find something for behind that. Oh, these are lovely. Let's pop them down. I actually like how both of those are. Glue this one fully. Because I know I'm not going to have anything behind it. With this one, yeah, that one don't work so well. Now, oh, this one's lovely. We're going to pop this one on. I love the look of this one. Oh, I've been gardening as well just recently. And um, we've got bad weather back again now, though. But um, oh, my garden's getting so pretty, and I've put all my bulbs in, so I'm really excited for when my bulbs bloom because that is going to be so so pretty. Oh, this is lovely. I think I will put this just at the bottom here. It's a really delicate one. So yeah, my garden's looking so nice now. Um, I've just got to do all my grass area 
um, the lawn. I'm not putting lawn down, I'm doing grass seed, but um, I've got to level out the ground there because we literally, you know, last year took up everything. Um, so of course everything needed doing. Um, the only thing we managed to get done last year was the patio. But I have, because I have pots, so I'm not having plants in the ground because the ground is very clay-like and it is horrible, horrible. And I'm not digging out all that soil and replacing it and things. I cannot be dealing with that job. So, um, I use pots for all my plants. And yeah, they just look absolutely gorgeous at the moment. And I've even brought plants into the house which I haven't done in ages and my house looks all pretty so yeah I'm really in the mood for this um <laughs> this project I'm really in a flowery mood I'm just going to get rid of this piece of paper this is why it's a good idea to use a magazine for um a glue book type, type of area because you can just tear the page off and carry on so I'm going to do the doily thing again because I just loved how that looked. So just take a bit of random doily, placing it down and gluing it. And then when you come around to have a look on the other side, you can um, sort of adjust all of that and things and get it just how you like it. There we go. some over here as well any loose bits you can either tear them off or glue them down I tend to just glue them down like so turn it around and then from there we can just adjust where we want it to go where we don't like them etc there we go i'm just going to decorate the bottom up now so i was looking at some of my other pictures that i have here one that word would be nice those words would be nice i've got this flower and we could put on a few birds so here i think i'm going to fussy tear these birds actually sorry concentrating <laughs> i want to snip off a bit of bird maximum concentration time so as you see if I cut them out as a square because they could be usable as you know part of a journal card or something I can easily adapt it and ch change it to whatever I need at the time so I really like that. I do want to ink the edges up just a little bit. Um, it is already a vintage paper. But this just helps to blend it into the background so it's not quite so harsh. So I'm just going to pop on these birds, they're so cute. I think behind them I'm going to have a little bit of doily as well. So I think that would look really, really pretty. Yep, I like that. So what I'm doing is I'm just gluing down the 
birds onto the doily before I glue the doily onto the envelope. Two reasons for that. One, I can get the birds exactly where I want them on the doily. Two, I can stop the doily crumpling up quite so much. You know, because when you use wet white glue, it can make it go all kinds of funny. I'm leaving all these loose, I like that. They will sort of tear off at some point and things, that's fine. Let's have a look. Is there anywhere I could put this pretty flower? Picking out from behind? Yeah, I like that. Very pretty. Happiness blooms from within, which is very appropriate for this, I think. So again, I just want to ink the edges, not much, just enough to kiss it to blend in. side or that side? No, this side. Just make sure I've got no glue on the back of that. Nope, we're good. Did line it up right. And then for this side and for down here, I think I'll do a couple of little butterflies just to sort of um, take away from that glue there. one's too big but this one is really really good I'm not going to burnish this one I'm just going to stick it down let's have a look see if we can find a smaller pink one So I'm just going to stick this doily down here. And then stick this down. This is um, a die cut one from like one of my magazine sets, I think. But it does go really well. It's really cute. So there we go. We have ourselves another little pocket. Which is a little bit wet right now. But when it's not wet making sure nothing's stuck down there we go we've got ourselves another pocket there so they are absolutely beautiful i hope you have enjoyed this i hope you want to give it a go definitely give it a go because they're so easy to make um, and you can use old mail letters old um, christmas cards envelopes are really good for this um, birthday card ones you know the really small ones so yeah um, definitely give it a go um, so I'm going to catch up on all the things that I've got going on in my store at the moment, uh, or in my store and socials and everything. So I've got my new newsletter. You just pop onto my website. Um, I have linked it down in the description box and I've put where the newsletter is. If you just scroll down a bit, it will say to, bleh, to sign up or to subscribe, something like that. You just put in your name and your email. It won't ask you for anything else. Um, you won't be paying anything, nothing like that. Um, then I will be able to send you out um, on the first. So it's going out, the first one's going out the first of this month. Um, and I'll be able to send you out all of the newsletters. Now, the newsletter, you only get one a month. So I'm not going to bombard you with emails, not at all. It's not what that's for. Um, and you get a freebie printable, you know, digital on there. 
um, and that freebie will be in the file for one month only so I highly recommend you download that and you know grab it when you can um, because the next month it will change for the next newsletter so yeah definitely um, sign up for that because it's it's well worth it I do update you on things that I've got going on in my YouTube and things like that but mainly you know it's a way for me to give you freebies without um, you know having to set up like maybe a whole Facebook or something like that um, and the freebies that you get from the newsletters will not be ever for sale and they will not be in the members part so I've got a place where you can become a member as well um, you can become one of my jelly tots or sweet peas is what I've called them um, and that's because I call everybody my sweet pea or my jelly tot like oh how are you sweet pea I don't know why that's something I do and so I put it as that um, but if you join up for either one of those you get the free digitals um, if you sign up for the higher one which is the sweet peas you also get a free happy mail every month on the first as well but my newsletter digitals will not be on the member ones and they won't be for sale they are completely separate just for people that are receiving the newsletter so yeah if you want to receive that it's just a way to give pe give back to say thank you to people you can use that however you want you know so say you're a youtuber yourself and i've got a few youtubers subscribed hey you can use that in your kits you can use that in your own digital kits you can use it in your own journals you can do whatever you want with them it's completely copyright free i don't use i've used completely free domain things um, and yeah, I just want people to have fun with it really. Um, I'm not concerned with people sharing them on or anything like that. You you do you, you just have some fun and do what you want. That's not my issue. Um, I haven't spent a long time making these. I haven't put my heart and soul into them to be to the point of saying, don't copy my work, you know? I mean, if my journals or my art, that'd be different, but it's it's not. It's something that I don't mind sharing with everyone so and they all I, they are all free public domain if it wasn't free public domain and I had somebody else creating the content for me I wouldn't be able to do that but I don't so yeah please feel free to have some fun with that um like I said the members bit you can become a member or you can just donate to me all the money goes into everything that I create and everything that I you know use which I use a lot it costs a lot of money so that's what that's for um but obviously if you are like the sweet peas I always make sure that I use your full amount of money for your happy mails so you do get some items in there you do get things I've made in there um you do get really nice happy mails each month so yep you can do that if you want to um all my socials are linked down there sorry we were cut off again because you know me I don't check the blooming time <laughs> so my socials I was saying all my socials are down in the description box you can go on to them and have a look on there of course shabby dabby do does video if I haven't mentioned that already I don't think I have um that is down there do go check that out she is the original I believe um, one to come up with this idea um, if she isn't she does say in her videos she is very good at usually um, you know saying whether she's original or not I just I can't remember I can only reference you what I've seen and I saw this from her um, yeah um, all the people all the digital artists that I use for my printables that I print out and use myself are all down in the description box below um, and I think that's it for today. So have a lovely day um, and I will see you tomorrow. Tomorrow is a really good one um, and we're using a Tracy Fox idea. I don't usually watch Tracy Fox. Um, I've only just come across her because lots of other people do. And I saw one of her ideas so I'm going to be linking her tomorrow in the description box so that you can use her videos. Um, I'm just gonna make sure today she doesn't mind. Um, by message on her and just make sure she doesn't mind but yeah so that will be that and I hope you have a lovely time and I will see you again tomorrow bye for now bye